Welcome to Zcast, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here for another uh, Thought Leadership Zcast. Uh, before I get going, though, I just do want to give a quick shout out, as always, to eWeek, my media partner. All Zcasts are done in conjunction with the eWeek He Speaks program. Uh, today, I'm joined by my Canadian brother, uh, John Arnold. How you doing, John? Uh, A-OK, Zayas. Good to see you. And uh, I, I think we're going to be talking a little hockey, so where are my black and gold today? Yeah, well, this is uh, certainly, uh, from a Canadian standpoint, this is the best time of the year, right? Uh, you know, for a lot of people, it's Christmas, Thanksgiving, or whatever. But for Canadians, it's NHL playoff time, which means we're glued to our TVs all day, every day. Uh, your Leafs in are in it. My Bruins are in it. And uh, quick prediction, though, how far are these teams going to go? Who's going to win it? Yeah, well, you know, I'm I, I live in Toronto, but I'm I'm Boston all the way. That's where, I, where my roots are. You know, going into this, it looked like the Leafs had a pretty good shot at beating the Lightning, but I don't think they're going to pull it out. I the next game will tell everything. Game fives are always like this when it's tied, but they uh, they're going to have to really come through big time because the blowouts don't look good for them. I worry more when the Leafs get blown out than when Tampa gets blown out because they both had it. And then the Bruins showed their they showed their grit, right? They've solved, I think, Carolina, and I think they're going to win that series. Okay. Well, John says Tampa over Leafs. I'm saying Bruins over Carolina because of a big homer, and because actually I think they're a better team. Uh, it, it, Carolina's fast, but uh, you know the Bruins got a lot of they got four deep lines, and that you know the, this, this is sort of what this team is built for. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, speed usually wins, but um, I, I don't think they have as much offensive talent. And the goaltending is about equal. And yeah, the, the shout out to Canada, Zayas. There's three Canadian teams in the punt right now, and that's the best it's been here in a long time. And, you know, Montreal getting to the finals last year is a very distant memory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, they finished it. last, so, you know. Yeah. And uh, so very quick, before we get into what we want to talk about, uh, take Colorado out of the prediction because they're the obvious odds to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, who do you think, other than Colorado, uh, could win it? Uh, I, I still think it could be the Bruins. I, I could see them coming out of the East. You know, they've, they've, they, the only team they couldn't beat this year was Carolina. And I think they've figured that out now. And if they can do that, uh, yeah, I think they can do it. The Rangers could still be a problem, you know. And, then of course, you can't rule out the Panthers. But, you know, they got smoked the other night. So that shows that they're vulnerable. Yeah, I'd love to see Sid the Kid have one more run. I don't think it's in them, though. Uh, I think Tampa's loaded. If they get by this round with Toronto, uh, I think they can go deep just because that team is so loaded with talent. So. Gee, we should start a hockey podcast, man. We should start a it's hockey podcast. Way more yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's working. Uh, anyways, what we're here to talk about is uh, hybrid work. Uh, John and I both recently attended events. You were at Polly's uh, PEC, uh, Polly Experience Center. I went to Cisco's One Penn Plaza building. Uh, before we talk about what we saw, though, what's what's going on hybrid? Everybody tells me about hybrid work, hybrid work, people are going back to the office. But then I read, I read last week that Apple employees wrote a letter to the company saying, we don't want to ever go back to the office. And every company HR leader I talked to say they tried to bring, bring people back and they get a significant amount of pushback. So where are we, John? Like what's going on with hybrid work? Are we actually ever going to go back? I don't know. It, this, this, uh, this is starting to look like a failed experiment. Um, when we were at Enterprise Connect, you know, that was the, the big storyline there, right? What are we going to do about hybrid work? And only because it's the first Enterprise Connect we've had since hybrid work was a thing. So everyone wanted to know. And it was clear, certainly to me and I'm sure to you, that no one really knows. And I think the longer it stays this uncertain, I think the more the habits that, we, that have become hardwired for a lot of workers are going to stick. You know, there's less and less reason to go. I don't. I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but you know, here in Canada, gas is hitting two dollars a liter, which is yeah. like nine bucks a gallon in the U.S. or something ridiculous. I mean, it's becoming a factor for a lot of people. And anyone who's living in big cities now knows how expensive it is here. It's like the comforts of home are pretty hard to give up for everything yeah. that comes with going back. But I, I still think I'll just say one more thing is. It's the pendulum always swings both ways and people, they like their work at home stuff. But the reality is, listen, not everybody wants to work at home or likes it. And going in your house, sun up to sundown and never leaving 
you go stir crazy after a while. And when you got kids and screaming pets and all that stuff, you want to get to the office because yeah. you just need to get out. So I know with pandemic going away now, it changes a lot of the equation. But geez, the real estate, they have so much money tied up in office space. Something has to give. Yeah, so this is actually... Uh, something I predicted. Um, if uh, you go back and rewatch the uh, keynote of the UC Summit that UC Today put on, uh, I, I actually did a little Q&A with Rob Scott, and I said the first wave of return to work would be a disaster because companies really don't know what to do, right? They're they're kind of stuck in, you know, what do you do from a people side? How, how often you should you bring it back? And what does the future of work look like? And I've used the analogy that the future of work looks like college or university if you're in Canada, right, as, as we call it there. And uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, not that we're at the student union building all the time drinking Molson's and stuff, uh, but what I mean by that is you think about your college days, you would go to campus to go to class, you would go to campus to meet with people and collaborate on projects. And in the in-between times, you would find a quiet place to work and, you know, and, and get some stuff done. But the majority of your individual work, you did at home. Right. You didn't go, you didn't schlep yourself, you know, on the bus to school, you know, to do individual work. And I think similarly in the office, we will do our individual work at home and then they, we will fill our calendars with days for specifically for collaborating. So we'll go there, do a bunch of meetings, a bunch of collaborative sessions. In the in between times, we might hot desk somewhere and, you know, get some work done. And um, I think how, what that looks like. I think people still need to see. And that's what I like about what Polly did and what Cisco did. And John, I know last week you went to the Poly Peck, uh, as it's uh, affectionately known, which is actually pretty close to Cisco's building, both down by Madison Square Gardens in New York. Tell me what you saw there. Yeah, it was uh, it was really, it was very well done. Um, very sleek, modern, lots of open windows. So you like, you feel like you're in the city, which is great. But then when you look at what's inside, it's like a Petri dish for all the toys. So every room had different demo centers for different, you know, the home office environment, the conference room environment, right? Very heavy on video. Um, there were a few desk phones. I just had to ask about that because I said, you know, in this day and age, who uses a phone? But still, you, it does play a role, right? And, the, you know, but there was no, for us, we're spoiled as analysts, right? We, we, we get the sneak peeks on everything. There was nothing new there that we haven't heard from Cisco, from Pexa, from Microsoft. They all have similar capabilities. Uh, what I found interesting was I was asking during one of the sessions is like, what are you betting on here? Because every a lot of what they talk about is their technologies and you know, their products. I shouldn't say technology because it really is a product heavy company, right? It's all endpoints. Yeah. They're, they're the ones, they're the kind of company that's making home-based work possible their products are perfect for home environment yeah. so if you're the company is betting big you know now it's hp play so now oh well we have computers we have monitors there's a lot to sell into the home if they're betting big on home-based work you're in the right place now is that going to kill them for office because now they're making home experience even better this is what makes the hybrid things you know you, you wonder if you're going to start to like short go short on companies, for example. Not that I do that, but you think, Polly's betting pretty big on the home office space. If you see what's there, right? It's, that's, you know, they, they're the store. They're, that's the one-stop shop to get everything you need to work from home. That's a pretty good selling point. Yeah. But if, is that the right strategy? I don't know. Do they want us to go away from the office? They've just invested a ton in a physical space we go to. So I guess they want people to work in the office too. Otherwise they wouldn't invest in this place. So it was it was good experience, but yeah, who's gonna go to this experience center? Much like the Cisco one you saw, um, yeah. I mean, is it there just to showcase stuff and impress people? They're not gonna close deals there, I don't think. But you know, it speaks to how technology gets sold today. Yeah, well, as long as, you know, and it, it is a good question: how many of these companies are gonna survive? As long as they can stick around through our retirement, that that's really what matters, right? So that's your horizon. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say that the Cisco one was a little bit different in that this project was started actually in March of 2020. And it's I talked to Mark Miller, the the principal architect of this, uh, when they when we got the tour. And it was never really designed to be like the Poly Experience Center. It was just Cisco's office. And they knew the workforce was changing and they had to change the office along with it. 
but they were so impressed with what they built out, they now use it as an experience center when they where they shuffle customers in and out of there to show them what's possible. And some of the interesting, um, the thought process that went, in, went into it uh, actually does align well with my future working like college. Like for instance, the, um, the assumption before the pandemic was that uh, 70% of the people in that office were doing individual work, 30% were collaborating. They have flipped that around now where the assumption is only 30% are doing individual work and the 70% is, uh, is is collaborating. And so if you look at what they built out, almost everywhere that you sit could be a collaborative space. They have couches out, you know, out in these public areas and they have WebEx boards that you could start and just start collaborating, right? Um, I Some of the other sort of interesting nuanced things they did was even when you go into a conference room, all the tables are built trapezoidal in shape. Um, so you're always slightly gangled towards the screen and other people. So you're not looking in people's ear holes all the time. Uh, another interesting aspect of it was the, the um, you know, Cisco has got some pretty big uh, sustainability goals as a company, right? They want to be net zero by 2040. And so every light system, alarm system, uh, thermostat, um, all their IoT devices are all on the PoE network. And so they actually have a bigger PoE network, uh, an OT network, than they do an IT network. And so it's all low voltage lighting and things like that. But that, because it's on a common network, allows you to tie everything together. And so from an employee wellness standpoint, if you're in a room and it gets too hot, the blinds come down automatically. Or if the sun goes behind clouds, it comes up automatically to have better light and stuff. And so they, um, I think they, they really thought this out well. Um, and um, uh, I, I thought it was a good kind of showcase for what's possible. And I think that's sort of the important thing, John, is, is create a workspace that people want to go to that they know they will be more collaborative there. So, you know, like, I think kids in college, they still get together to do homework and stuff, right? And similarly, you'll want to go to the office to collaborate on projects. You won't be there every day. The challenge I see for both companies is how do you sell this, right? You can put these things together in your own office. And Javed Khan, the GM of uh, WebEx, kind of admitted that. It's like, well, people come through there and they go, wow, we love this. How do we buy it? And he's like, well, there's a lot of things you need to think about, like, you know, our architecture, tables, furniture, carpet, things like that. Cisco, of course, has to sell that stuff. And so the the, how the channel gets involved in this and actually sells it is kind of an interesting thought. And I don't know if you have any thoughts around that. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. This is what I was you know, saying before, like poly, at least it's all endpoints. So it's not that complicated. Yeah. They did have, do you remember this thing they had sound, habitat soundscaping? The sound, soundscape, yeah. I love that. I thought that was so, it was such an oddball idea. I loved it. But the guy who did a lot of that work, Bo Wilder, he's like one of the spoke, he did a lot of the talking at the, at the event. You know, stuff like that is much more holistic. It's more bigger picture stuff. But how do you sell it? I don't know. At least with Poly, it's pretty easy. They're all SKUs, pretty much. Cisco is selling a complete, like almost like a smart office solution, yeah. and that that is a more challenging thing to do. And I wonder, will that just end up being a partnership with maybe the uh, the the real, you know, commercial real estate guys, or even yeah, like or a steel case or something like world? that, right? Yeah. The, yeah, the like the office companies. furniture guys. I, to me, that makes a lot of sense because it's a much bigger scale sell. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know where the channel fits. And I, it's a challenge for the channel too with hybrid work. That space is going to get reinvented too. Yeah, the, um, the interesting thing about what Cisco's done is, um, you, you know, there are companies that make good software, right? And there's companies that make good hardware. You were, you know, Polly certainly one of them. But they're really the only one that makes both sides of that, right? And the... Um, for them, if once you see it, you kind of understand WebEx on WebEx, you know, WebEx devices on a WebEx experience on the Cisco network is a fundamentally different type of experience than I think anyways, than trying to run poly on teams or something like that. But mm -hmm. it's hard to understand those little nuances until you're actually using them. Right. And, and, uh, and I think this work from home era certainly didn't help Cisco out because everybody's using their laptops. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah. but, so but, I, I, to me, that's that's solely an, that's an enterprise sale, right? Whereas yeah. Poly, I think, has they they almost like they insulate themselves because their stuff works up and down, big, small. It doesn't matter what size, micro business. They're perfect for that. So that speaks to well, if you're betting heavy on hybrid work being at home, now your sales channels become more could be more retail based rather than you know going through the our channels and that we know. So that, that has a whole implication for their go-to-market strategy, 
but Cisco has got to be enterprise first. It's, that's just how yeah. they're built. And yeah. so that there's a lot at stake there because, yeah, as you mentioned, Teams is just so dominant right now on the desktop. And, uh, you know, and then they're pushing all the meta stuff, which is a whole other thing, too. Didn't hear much talk about meta metaverse stuff at Poly, that's for sure. That's just not in their, you know, radar right now. Or yeah, AI, you. for that matter. They talked a little bit about AI as improving the video experience with the auto framing and the way the camera pans, whether you're deep in the room or close to the front. That's all good stuff. But we, you know, that's relatively familiar for people like us. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the main question is how you use AI to do other things. Like even with, with Cisco, their WebEx speech assistant, uh, when Mark uh, Miller was given the tour, he just said WebEx lower the blinds and, you know, hey, WebEx did that and things. So it's the kind of intersection with the IoT network. I, I think right now where we are with AI, John, is we just have a lot of basic capabilities. Like you mentioned noise block and auto framing and things like that. But there's another wave of AI coming that I think will make this technology substantially easier to use. Um, and, and I think that's really going to ultimately dictate the next winner or loser. You know, I think Microsoft did a good job of leveraging, you know, actually, even if you go back, Cisco did a good job of leveraging their network to be able to bring VoIP in. Microsoft kind of usurped them by attaching teams to the desktop, even though it's really not that great a product. Um, and I, but I think the next winner of the space is how you make this so easy to use that literally everybody can use it. And it, it um, and not just, you know, from point and click perspective, but even through speech and things like that. I think back to the, the Zoom example where that lawyer was the cat and things like that and didn't know how to turn her off. You shouldn't really need to know, right? Like if somebody says, you know, turn off the filter, turn off the filter or whatever, right? So, you know, we'll see where this goes, but I, but I think there's a lot of work to be done and conversational AI and gesturing and things like that that we're just scratching the surface on. So. Yeah, very early. Well, you know, I still think, you know, Poly with HP could end up being in a very good position because, you know, people natively understand endpoints. You can hold them, right? You touch, you're interacting with them. So if you're trying to make the whole new hybrid work experience familiar and native, you know, it's the endpoints you're using. And, and uh, they're just probably all they're missing is a mobile device, which you know, maybe they could come up with a solution for that. But otherwise, they have end-to-end, -end, they have every possible device you could poss you could need for hybrid work. That's a pretty good position if you're good at marketing and productizing the experience as endpoint-driven. But where Cisco is, that's a different kind of a sell. That's, that, that is a software, as you say. That you can't touch it. You can't see it. You just experience it. That's a little harder for workers to kind of, you know, you remember, uh, what's her name, uh, Amy... Amy Chang, yeah. when she was there, her big her big pitch was we got to win the hearts and minds, and I, I I think it's much harder to do that when you're using software than when you're using devices. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Uh, you know, but I, I think even like the way Cisco's handled hot desking, I think is pretty interesting because people hate hot desking, mm -hmm. and I think they're going to have a challenge selling desktop unless you actually get people to use it. Once you sit down at a desk with desktop and you drop your phone on or you QR code in and boom, everything becomes yours. That's a really interesting experience, right? But it's one of those things when you hear hot desk, you're like, oh, hot desk, you know, I go to my phone, I punch my pin code in. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but I think Cisco's done a nice job of rethinking those experiences. And now they got to figure out how to get people to retry the experiences, yeah. you know, which is yet a different challenge. So they need people like us more than ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Uh, anyways, John, uh, hope you had fun in New York. Uh, you know, it does seem like travel's back, so I'm sure I'm going to be seeing you more and more at these different conferences here and there. So yeah, uh, exactly. looking forward to love catching it. up live. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see a Leafs Bruin playoff series coming up here. That would be awesome. And if we do that, uh, we'll each wear our respective gear. How's that? Exactly. I will be there. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, John. On behalf of John Arnold, my, uh, uh, my brother from Canada, uh, I'm Zias Caraval from Zcast. See you next time. Thanks.